So, moving on, we were promised, weren't we, a bonfire of EU laws, but that seems to have been extinguished somewhat. Business Secretary Kemi Badenoch, she said it's impossible for the government to push through plans to ditch all EU laws because of the Whitehall blob. Instead, only 600 out of 4,800 EU laws will face scrapping or reform. So, joining me in the studio, very quick changeover, Chair of the British Political Action Conference, Henry Bolton, and former Minister for Europe, Dennis McShane. I think I've had you both on together before, actually. You have. So we'll yeah. see if sparks Great fly. Um, who should I start with on this? Ah. Uh, let's go to Henry. Henry, Hi. do you feel like this is all a bit of a, a betrayal of Brexit? Yeah. Um, partly. Partly. And, you know, none of these things are, are, are black and white, sadly. Um, It'd be so much easier. Yeah, it would. It, would, it really would. Uh, but the government seems to treat them as though they're black and white. And uh, so do the media. And not yourself, of course. <laughs> um, what we've got is we've got a whole, a whole bunch of legislation there that the government said, right, we've got to, we want to get rid of this. And everybody said, good, that's mm. progress. All the Brexiteer side said, great, that's good progress. You know, we're finally doing something. Let's get rid of these laws that tie us to the European Union and, and whatever. And, and in fact, some of those laws do it. So, for example, right at the top of the list, there is a, well, it's not a law, it's a regulation. So this is something that the Commission basically has, has imposed, and it is imposed on member states on, in terms of, and it, it governs or lays, establishes the controls and inspections to, to enforce the common fisheries policy. So that's one that, for example, should go because ministers in the UK cannot make decisions to do something slightly different, to diverge from the EU in that respect, whilst that's still on, on the statute books. So let's get rid of that. It has the power of law, it's enforceable, State, member states have to comply with it. It's still sitting there. So that, those sort of things need to change. But on the other hand, there are also regulations in there that prevent the import and export of dog and cat fur. Now, how many people in this country would really like to see the UK importing and exporting dog or cat fur? Probably very, very few. So that regulation actually has some, some merit. Um, but that's in there to be removed as well without any particular replacement. And if you look de at in a detailed way at UK law, the parliament has, or gov the government has introduced a law that um, now gives the Secretary of State uh, the power, using a statutory instrument, to bypass that and to allow the import and export, import and export of dog fur. Do we want that? So I, 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 I don't think this has been thought through by the government fully. And the, res the result is they have presented this as 4,000 pieces of EU legislation mm -hmm. that must go to break away from the European Union um, and have suddenly found that actually some of it is actually quite useful and some of it they don't really know what the consequences are. They haven't thought it through. My, my final point on that, just very quickly, is that this signifies the real betrayal of Brexit, which is that the government, in fact, no politician in this country, has presented a clear vision and a clear roadmap as to how we achieve that vision post-Brexit. Mm. What do we want to be? What do we want to do with agriculture, fisheries, defence, security, immigration, borders, trade? This never happened. It still never happened. And therefore, how do you draw up a really relevant list of EU legislation that you want to get rid of. Mm. Um, but that that's there it... presents you from developing new policy. So there's a whole load of things to unpack on this. It's a failure of government and failure of public administration and a failure, which I've always said, there's nothing new in what I'm saying here, of Brexiteers, leading Brexiteers, elected and otherwise, to lay down a clear vision and say that's where we want to go. That still needs to be done. Well, there you go. I mean, it's very difficult for um, the Conservative government under its new leadership to do so, knowing that a general election is coming very soon and with popularity pretty low too to set out a whole new vision. But I, I take your point that they, they haven't done so yet. Dennis, what do you think? A lot of Brexiteers thought that one of the first things the government would do would be to go through all of these EU laws and regulations with a fine tooth comb, decide which ones benefit our economy, benefit mm -hmm. our citizens, which ones don't, which ones can be amended a little bit. 
It's not beyond the wit of man, is it? Are the civil servants at fault here? Good Lord, no. I mean, if, if I'm in complete agreement with Henry. I, thank goodness he's come over to my side of the fence. He's just made the speech. <laughs> I have made... Hang on, we've been to you so that you'd 20, be different. 2014, 2015, 2016, it's a bit more complicated. It's not like Boris Johnson just dumping one of his wives or women. It's technically unbelievably We've got the Boris Johnson siren there. Uh, and so... What it's not particularly the famous the blob. Well, the blob then is Joanna Lumley. I don't know if she's an honorary blob. She is leading the campaign on animal welfare because she believes it's important. And what Jacob Rees-Mogg wanted to do was rip up all the laws on the British statute book that we fought to get on, onto the European statute book on animal welfare. Henry correctly mentioned fish. Well, we could rip all that up, then we wouldn't because export a single let sardine me just, to let Europe. Let me just interject there, because I don't know if you've seen recently, but there's been oh. news stories about how the UK has chosen to align ourselves with the EU laws mm -hmm. on animal testing. So we are yeah. now animal testing to be aligned with the EU. What is all that about? Well, well again, you know, if it's back to my, my main point there, which was if you don't have a clear policy as to, a policy as to what you want to do, now, and policy and its implementation is what the public will vote on, what is it you want to do, political party? What is it you are capable of delivering? What have you failed to deliver that you said you would? All of that sort of thing. That's what people vote on. If you, have got, if you haven't got clear policy, a clear plan, a clear vision, which is about leadership, then you cannot possibly work out what legislation you need in place. If you want to ban dog and cat imports, if that's important, uh, fur imports, then you've got to have the legislation in, in place. It's, it's simple. But we're starting in the wrong place. We're, we're starting from, I think, a position of we have to break clean of the European Union. We don't really know how to do it. We don't know how to present it to the public. So we're going to take all this retained legislation and we're going to put the axe to it. And people will like that. Mm. And that's true. People will like it. But most people listening and watching here have not got the time to look through even the list, let alone scrutinise well, each piece of the 4,000 well, pieces of legislation. Actually, 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 we do have an absolutely enormous civil service. Huge. The civil service. Can't yeah. be beyond the wit to look through some of these laws. Some of them are pretty basic, aren't they? They're not but, all uber, uber complex. But, the, but, but you, can't, you can't know whether you want it or not. Unless you know what policy you want. When I was helping but governments in Central putting Asia... Every, putting uh, every law and regulation to a parliamentary debate... No, you don't need to oh do that. Oh, my goodness. But you don't need to do that, but you do need to know what policy you're aligning mm -hmm. the legislation to. When I was in Central Asia, they said, well, you know, we want to do this, this, this and this, but the law doesn't allow us to do it. And I said, well, you know, where law is made by your assembly, OK? If, you're, if you've got a government that wants to pursue a particular policy, you then look, does the legislation allow us to do it, yes or no? If it doesn't, well, what do we need mm. to enable us to do it? You don't start off with just a principle of let's axe the legislation. No, well, you are very much um, echoing a column that was in... Sorry to leave you. No, Henry's been sorry, dominating. Sorry, sorry. Henry, sorry, Henry's sorry, been sorry. absolutely dominating. I, 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 I don't have to say anything uh, no, he's speaking my language. <laughs> he, should have, he should have been Jacob Rees-Mogg. Well, 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 this, 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 this isn't politics. This is common sense. Hang on, this Henry. Henry. We've, got to give, wow. we've got to give the last word to Dennis because I think it will have to be the last word. But What Henry said there has echoed, actually, what's been written in today's Daily Express, which, of course, is a Brexit-backing newspaper. You've got Liam Fox. Fox, Brexiteer, David Davis, Brexiteer, Andrea Leadsom, Brexiteer, saying that Kemi Badenoch's right to uh, U-turn on this scrapping of all the Excellent. EU laws, etc. So Let's it, have lots more. But I think the worry, though, Dennis, from people Brexiteers, from the average, the average Joe Brexiteer, is that if they don't do this now, yep. it's not going to happen because we, we're Correct. probably going to have a Labour government or possibly a Labour, Liberal, Democrat, SNP coalition of sorts. Doubt it, but... It's never going to happen. Look... But you'd be happy, a, though, Dennis. It's, I'm not happy. How can I be happier? We've had seven of the worst economic and social divisive years of our life. Our politics the last seven years in all parties, I stress that, has been dreadful. You won't find a symbol, single manager in the chemical industry who thinks it's a good idea to take working chemical regulations that allow us to export to Europe and tear them all up to please Jacob Rees-Mogg. Dennis Smog. is right. It's every political party. Thank you. My goodness. It's a, to it's a total lack of leadership 
across the board. Lack of vision. And until we have that, and this is why I, I welcome the CDO conference that's taken place, not because of political bias or anything, but, but simply because there is a, at least some growing awareness in one of the political parties that you need some visionary leadership and you need capable people to, in Parliament. From Priti Patel? Well, I, uh, there's, capable some, leadership. there's a growing awareness <laughs> this that, trust. that's the need. Come on, Eddie. We, we, the Look at the Labour front bit. I think Henry should that. be Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> I'd work for him if he was Prime Minister. Hey, sure. Do you know yes. what, but though, you Dennis? Dennis, you can it's, be very, in my cabinet, it's very Dennis. easy to, you know, <laughs> sit at the sidelines and say, oh, they're an idiot, they're an idiot, they're an idiot. But I think it's a very difficult time to be in politics. And looking at the shadow front bench, I'm not too impressed with that. I'm not sure our viewers at home would be either. It's a, it's a bit of a Hobbes choice, really. We have to break clean the European it's, Union. It's, it's, we have to break it's, it's difficult. I agree. The quality of politicians generally... Sorry, 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 that's, that's maybe we need to pay stuff. them a million pounds old a year stuff. and then no, maybe no, they'd no, be no, half no, decent, no, possibly no, no. not, I mean, then Boris they'd just be serious. I'll, 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 I'll do it for 20 grand. I'll do it for 20 grand, but I'll only do two hours a week. There you go. Henry Bolton, who is chair of the British Political Action Conference, and Dennis McShane, former minister for Europe. We had a bit of agreement, but we also had a bit of disagreement, which is nice.